nothing is forever, and therefore also volcanoes go extinct sooner or later. Some volcanoes can be active for up to a few million years, but eventually no more magma is supplied to them and they stop erupting. The volcanoes become extinct. This is different from being dormant, which refers to a long interval during which no eruption occurs. This can be thousands to tens of thousands of years. But if a volcano is extinct, it means it never erupts again. What happens then to a volcano? Erosion, wind, rain, glaciers and so on slowly tear down the volcano. Rivers and glaciers erode deeper and deeper channels and valleys into the flanks of the volcano. An active volcano that erupts regularly has often a nice and even shape, as Pico do Fogo in the Cape Verde Islands we can see here. Mount Hood in the US, on the other hand, is not as smoothly shaped as Pico do Fogo. This volcano is still active, but has not erupted that often in the past few thousand years. Therefore, erosion was able to cut deep gullies and small valleys into the flanks of the volcano. And also the volcano Öræfjökull in Iceland shows signs of erosion. This volcano is still active, but glaciers are carving deep canyons and valleys into the volcano. Mount Thielsen, also in the US, is an extinct volcano that last erupted more than 200,000 years ago. Erosion of the volcanic flanks has progressed quite far and left a steep pinnacle. Eventually, this pinnacle will also disappear. The longer a volcano is inactive, the deeper erosion cuts into the volcano. This is quite useful for scientists, because eroded volcanoes reveal their inner structure. In Iceland's east fjords, for example, we can look inside old volcanoes that have gone extinct a few million years ago. Erosion has cut into the piles of lava and today we can see the pathways magma took to the surface in earlier times, so-called dikes. Where erosion cut deeper into the volcanic pile, we can even see fossil magma chambers, places where magma was once stored under an active volcano. After the end of the volcanic activity, magma in the chambers solidified and is now exposed in the fjords. By studying these structures and by taking samples of these rocks that formed under a volcano, we can learn a lot about today's active volcanoes and the processes that are happening underneath them. So as we see, even when a volcano becomes extinct, its story continues, leaving behind new landscapes and fascinating geological records. And while some volcanoes reach the end of their life cycle, new volcanoes are being born driven by the magma beneath them. In the next video, we'll explore the difference between magma and lava, a key concept in volcanology. See you there!